Welcome back. In this video, we'll establish the connection between uh, kaurish kuhn tucker's theorem and convexity. Uh, before we do that, let's have a quick look at some important characteristics of convex functions. So that's our first theorem for today. We'll start with the usual setting. So let x in R to the n be a convex set and let f be a function defined on the domain x to R um, and that's also a convex function. Then the following are true. Number one, the set of global minimizers of f is also a convex set. So we call that set capital F here. The, the global minimizers are those points x star in capital X where f of x star is the minimum possible function value, so the minimum of all f of x, x in capital X, right? All points where this minimum is assumed, that set of global minimizers of f is a convex set. So if you want to find the global optima of that function, the global minima of that function, we are looking to find a convex set. Uh, second, every local minimizer of f is also a global minimizer. And that is probably the most important property of a convex function with regards to optimization. If we can find a local minimizer, then this automatically is a global minimizer as well. Reason for this is simple. Um, imagine you had a function where this is not the case. So we have a local optimum here, and then maybe another local optimum here. Then this function cannot possibly be convex. For example, if you take a point here and a point here, then obviously the line connecting those is not lying above the graph. Yeah. If it has to lie above the graph, we'll have to modify the graph to somehow look like this. And of course that would mean this here. Um, is there not a local optimum anymore? This here still is, but that is also the global optimum. Okay, so that's that's why this works, and that's this important property. Every local minimizer of f is also a global minimizer of f. Third property, if f is even differentiable, then we can find the minimizers simply um, by looking at stationary points. Because by convexity, every stationary point is automatically a minimum. So if f is differentiable on x, then a point x star in x is a minimizer, local as well as global, of f. If and only if the gradient of f at x star is zero. And as I said, because of convexity, we cannot have local maxima um, and we cannot have saddle points as well. And finally, number four, if f is even strictly convex, then the global minimizer is even unique. So it has at most one unique minimizer then. 
if f is even strictly convex, it has at most one unique minimizer. Okay, so those are the important properties of convex functions. And now let's connect convex functions to KKT. So that theorem that's kind of an extension of KKT for convex functions. We'll have a setting um, that is the same as in the KKT theorem. So as there, we just say let X be a set that is open and also convex now, subset of R to the N. Be open and convex. We'll have a function F defined on X mapping to R. Be convex. And also differentiable. And we also need a function for the constraints. So g is a function defined on the domain x that maps to r to the m. Let g x r to the m. With g of x equals. So we we'll call the um, component functions g1 to gm. So g is the function composed of those components g1 to gm. Um, so that let that be a function such that all these GI functions are convex and differentiable. for i from 1 to m. And we need one more condition, um, a so-called constraint qualification once again. Um, this time we'll, we'll use one that is in most practical applications easily fulfilled. Um, we will demand that there is a strictly feasible point. So meaning one feasible point where not only g is equal or, uh, less or equal to zero, but strictly less than zero. Okay, so suppose there exists a point, let's call it x bar in x, such that g of x bar is strictly less than zero. Yeah, so by that I mean for all components that will hold, so that you're told, right? GI of X bar is less than zero for all components GI. And then we can characterize optima. Then X star in capital X is an optimal solution to the optimization problem, the usual one, minimize f of x subject to g of x is less or equal to zero. If and only if there exists a multiplier vector y star in r to the m so one multiplier for each constraint such that x star together with this multiplier y star is a kkt point 
Okay, and the important thing here is this if and only if condition. All right, so that means the condition is now both necessary and sufficient. So every KKT point is also automatically a minimizer with corresponding multiplier, of course. Um, and one more remark, this condition here that g of x bar is less than zero, that such a point exists, that is also referred to as the Slater condition. It's one possible so-called constraint qualification that ensures that KKT holds. If that's not the case, and we might run into edge cases where KKT actually does not work anymore, at least not necessarily and sufficient anymore. Okay, but usually in practical applications that is the case. Uh, so it's often very easy to verify that. We'll have a look at one example before we conclude that. And of course, there'll be more examples um, in the exercise classes. So let's see one possible example. Um, one very special case of convex functions are linear or affine functions. So we're going to look at linear problems to see how that works for those. All right, so linear and affine functions are convex. So what about a linear optimization problem? We could just consider an LP, right? So the usual LP that we, you know is a maximization problem. It looks like this, maximize C transpose X subject to AX less or equal to B. That's the prototypical linear programming problem. And we can easily convert that into a problem um, in this KKT form, we need a minimization problem. So the objective function should be minus C transpose X. And of course, we need to rewrite the constraints just a little so that the right hand side becomes zero. So we need to define G of X as AX minus B. Right? And then this whole problem becomes minimize F of X subject to g of x is less or equal to zero. That's exactly the KKT problem. Now we can look at the KKT conditions for that. What do they look like? Let's start with the gradient here. The gradient of f is clearly minus c. The Jacobi matrix of g is just the matrix A. So what, what do the KKT conditions look like? Well, if we look at the first condition, condition one, that says the gradient of F plus the transpose of the Jacobi matrix of G at X times Y, the multiplier, is zero. So here, what we get is minus C plus a transpose y is zero or reformulated a transpose y is c so that's the first kkd condition uh, then we have feasibility clearly so condition two is then g of x is less or zero so what that means here is ax is less or equal to b condition three is not applicable, that is, um, that is um, feasibility for the equality constraints. There is no equality constraints here. Condition four simply says the multipliers are non-negative. And then condition five, complementarity conditions, and that says y transposed ax minus b is equal to zero. And all of that should look somehow familiar if you're familiar with uh, linear programming, and I hope you are. What we have here is basically first this 
condition from the optimization problem itself, ax less or equal to b. Then we have a condition that says ATY equals C for a multiplier Y that is non-negative. So Y is less or greater or equal to zero. And then we also have this fifth condition here, Y transposed AX minus B is zero. So what is that? Well, this first condition here, that clearly is primal feasibility. That's the primal at P, and that just says, well, the solution X has to be primal feasible. The second, here on the right-hand side, this is clearly the dual problem, or more specifically, the feasibility part of the dual problem. So that is dual feasibility. And what's this last one here? This condition here? We know that as well. Um, that is the complementarity conditions, or sometimes called complementarity, complementary slackness conditions. Um, that accounts for optimality. So that's the complementarity conditions. And those make sure that a feasible primal dual pair is also optimal. If that condition is fulfilled, then we have optimality. So what we can see here, that LP duality is actually a special case of the KKT theorem. Okay, so we have extended LP duality to work for nonlinear optimization problems as well um, in the convex case and even in, in more general cases. And we see that this is actually an outright extension of LP duality, meaning if we are back in the LP setting, then KKT simply states the duality theorem of linear programming. Okay, that concludes this. Uh, we'll see one more example, one more economic application before we conclude this chapter on Karush-Kuhn-Tucker theorem.